so uh, we we have a clip of at least part of the uh, the the coat stuff that everybody got mad about. And I haven't said this out loud, but I think about it a lot. Where I, 20 years old, born into Gaza, which is a giant open-air jail. And what I mean by that is if my father is a fisherman and he goes too far out into the sea, he might get shot yeah. by somebody off of, you know, inside of Israeli boats. If my mother picks the olive trees and she gets too close to the wall, she might be shot. If my little sister has, you know, cancer and she needs treatment because there are no, you know, facilities to do that in Gaza and I don't get the right permit, she might die. And I grow up under that oppression and that poverty and the wall comes down. Am I also strong enough or even constructed in such a way where I say, this is too far? I don't know that I am. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that I am. Yeah. Uh, so all the smartest people in the world decided that what Coates was saying was that, uh, he loves Hamas, uh, 10, seven was great. And, uh, Hamas did nothing wrong. Um, Just yeah, they're, out of they're, watching that. well, well, there are tenured, I think tenured, is this, is this, is this guy tenured? There's a, a tenured professor arguing that, right? Uh, oh yeah, um, yeah. Shy. Uh, Shy, uh my, yeah. My, my, my favorite, uh, yeah, I think we actually watched a clip of him during the, uh, when the Columbia encampment was going on. Yeah. Uh, this was yeah. the Columbia prof who was, uh, uh, draped himself in a giant Israeli flag, like Captain Israel, and uh, and 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 was uh, uh, in hysterics because like his his uh, faculty ID had been demagnetized oh, or something. He, yeah, his latest move is apparently like walking past protesters and like bumping into them and like saying that he was uh, accosted or something like that. Uh, Sounds but, about right. But he yeah, he he weighed in on this. Uh, he said, uh, "Tanahasi Coates is not is not above uh, raping young women at a music festival in the name of resistance." That's the headline. Everything else is commentary. Um, so, yeah, definitely not a libelous thing to say about somebody. Um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, whatever you want to say about Shy, uh, it's in good faith, right? Agree, yeah. disagree. Yeah. He's taking his ideas and offering a counter, right? He's not you know, just trying to slander somebody that he, that he disagrees with at all. Yeah. I, I will also say, uh, okay. So on the substance, what he's saying here, I think it's absolutely, I mean, I think Coates's point is absolutely correct. Uh, of that, course. I mean, it's just, the, it's literally the, sorry. It's just one of the biggest outbreaks of idiocy I've almost ever seen on, on actually, you know what? I shouldn't say that because every day, is just a new record, right? Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, 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 the race with like, never ends. But I know, I, I don't know if it still is or not. But Matt Chrisman's uh, pin tweet uh, yes. for a long time uh, was on. Uh, it was the day. It was something he tweeted the day Trump was inaugurated in January 2017. And he said, "Truly, the stupidest day in American history, uh, about to be exceeded by every subsequent day." Uh, yes. Yes. you know, so fair, fair point. But yes, this one does. This one is particularly striking because, of course, what he says, I don't know, but be strong enough, right? Is that there is in fact an implied moral judgment, like there, right? It's it's the you know, like what he's saying has built into it that's like, yes, obviously this is wrong, but if I were in circumstances that extreme, uh, I'm not confident that you know that that I I wouldn't you know I, I wouldn't take out my rage by doing this, which is you know, just some very basic kind of, uh, human, um, you know, projection, right. That, you know, that, that like this, this, this kind of imaginative, uh, empathy that, you know, that you say, look, if I want to understand why things happen in the world, rather than just assuming that, you know, everybody, but Americans or Israelis are ontologically evil, right. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to like imaginatively project myself into those circumstances and try to imagine, uh, you know how that would play out right and so i could maybe understand like you know un- like they there could maybe be understandable human motivations you know for when other people do bad things um and and in particular which again just seems stunningly obvious to me it's I not even say- left it's not left wing it's i mean no, it's I guess, not. left of center maybe 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 right i mean just in the sense that it's like 
you know, just, just sort of doing the mental discipline to think this way probably means that you're not a raging right wing chauvinist, but like, you know, but I mean, this is something that like a very basic, like, this is something that any very basic ass lib should be able to understand, right? That, that well, it's, it's like it's like crime, right? I mean, it's like I don't it's to say that you know those from impoverished circumstances are more likely to like you know commit armed robbery does not mean that I necessarily support armed robbery, but right? But it means that I think. But that it does that tell you something about how to create a society which there's less yes. armed robbery, yes. right? And, so simple. You know, even 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 a, even a conservative, I think, could, could understand. No, that. no, I, that, I think that, thought, that crime thought, comes but, from you know, yeah. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Right? Yeah, right. Absolutely, a conservative should be able to understand that, right? In fact, I think like in some context, thoughtful conservatives do understand this, right? That's like, oh, um, I mean, not that. I mean, whatever, putting aside whether he, whether he exactly counts as a conservative or not, you know, Bill Clinton, uh, is, uh, you know, I don't know, not a leftist, right? Like, let's, let's at least say that. Right. And like, if you think about even fucking Clinton, right. You know, in that nightmare of, you know, Dickensian, you know, welfare reform and mass incarceration that he oversaw in the nineties, even there, like at least, at least he was talking about fucking midnight basketball, right? Because he was like, okay, people, like you know, like like we need to think about how to create more social infrastructure, you know, so people don't fall into gangs, etc. Right? There's some level of like willingness to entertain, like you know, how social circumstances could be set up to make people more or less likely, you know, to uh, to uh, fall. I- I, I, I can't help but think because I think I'm going to play basketball with a, a, some other mid thirties guys tomorrow. And like what that's preventing me from doing <laughs> like 7 PM basketball, you know, prevents me from uh, too much screen time, you know, like having ten yeah. screen time. getting imbued we, and watching own again. We, we, yeah, we need infrastructure for these, for these. So, men and so, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I thought all this, right? Everything I've been saying the last few minutes, like I thought all this when all I'd seen is the clip you just played, right? Um, That's like, yeah, clearly I understand exactly the point he's making. I think that point is clearly correct. Again, this takes us back to that period of national literacy after 9-11 because like this was one of the things I found most maddening at the time. The only acceptable explanation of terrorism was they hate us for our freedom. Um, Like, nope, nothing no motivations that are sort of more, you know, amenable to wrapping your mind around, or maybe even that we could do something in terms of American foreign policy to, to alleviate. None of that was acceptable. It's either you accept that they just hate, you know, they're just evil people who hate us for our freedom or you're, you're basically pro terrorist. Uh, and, and that always drove me nuts. It's like, no, clearly you can, clearly we should be able to separate causation from justification that, you know, that um, whether or not people, you know, like whether or not we approve of something, you should be able to understand a sequence of cause and effect that leads up to it, that leads to people who are not necessarily inhuman monsters doing things. So, which is really important because if you want to think about how you could make that less likely to happen in the future, Right. It's like, yes, you don't have to so you know approve of what bin Laden did to say in a world where, you know, American foreign policy was very different, you know, then then he would find a lot fewer recruits, you know, to uh to do stuff like that, right? And so I understood Coates' point perfectly when the clip you just played is all I saw. I agreed with his point perfectly, but I actually did not until I hit this morning uh see the fuller quote. Um, so this is actually kind of amazing, right? So I saw this, this is, this is, uh, is a sub stack, um, uh, it's the Jesse single sub stack. This is the, uh, he had the fuller version of the quote. And I just want to share this. Uh, so Coates said, and then we have, here's the part that we just listened to, right? Yeah. Uh, and then he says, And to think about that and to talk about that, and I think that's not unique to Israel. That is not unique to Palestine. That is not unique to Zionism. That is human history. That's human beings. 
I always tell people they think if they lived in the time of slavery that they would not have been enslavers. And I always thought you would have, you would have, because it's a system. And most human beings, we exist within context, within context, without that. You know what I mean? This idea that there could be some triumphant, heroic individual who's going to go above and beyond, that's just not the real thing. That's just not history. It's like, hold on. Once you got the rest of the paragraph there, if you're going to interpret the first part as him endorsing Hamas, now Ta-Nehisi Coates is also endorsing slavery? I mean, he's evil, so who knows what he would say? He's a, (laughs) yeah, yeah, wow. That is, that's... Nope, but uh, we, you got to listen to that guy, Shy. That's that's not the headline. I mean, that that I think the headline should be that he denies uh, John Brown existing. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it, like, no, but I, I guess just, yeah. But he's saying, I guess that like it's not like. I, I uh, mean, John Brown is like a rare figure that unfortunately that was rarely unfortunately seen in history, was, was which is unfortunate. Right, yeah, right. I mean, there always are John Browns, but there's not enough of them. Yeah, there no, are there. Are, well, but I mean, this this goes back to his original point, right? It's like, yes, there are John Browns, but most people are not going to be John Browns. And if you're confident that you would have been John Brown in that situation, and I am, and you know everybody else is, statistically speaking, most of us are lying to ourselves. Yeah, he's 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 going to have the uh, the leftist pro Hamas people angry at him too for implicitly comp- comparing it comparing it to slavery if they read the full quote. Honestly, I mean, it's just so obvious that he's not saying like. Yeah, Good. he's not saying, oh, this is great, right? I approve of this, right? You know, he's, he's saying, like, it's very easy to tell yourself that you would have, you know, I think, yeah, I think somewhere in all that, he actually used the phrase moral fortitude, right? But, yeah. like, you know, most of us, most of the time are not, right? You know, it's so like the example about slavery is most of us, most of the time, will go through whatever, you go along with whatever system is considered acceptable by people around us. The example about Hamas is, you know, that it's like uh, an awful lot of people given sufficiently dire and extreme and oppressive circumstances are going to lash out through whatever, you know, whatever organization gives you a chance to, to lash, to lash back at it. Yeah. Uh, And, and again, that's, you know, that has nothing to do with approving of anything, Right. But it, it is going to be extremely fucking relevant if we want to think seriously about, you know, yeah. Why is it like, you know, cause, cause if you think like, if you, if you acknowledge that as in fact, some Israeli generals in their more lucid moments will that like destroying Hamas uh, is, is just not going to happen. I mean, unless you like really just kill like literally everybody, right. Like that, that's not going to happen. So like, if you want to think about how you can have a, you know, a world where you're not going to get a bunch of young Palestinian men signing up for Hamas, right? Then you want to think about the kind of thing that Coates is raising here. And, and I mean, what about, you know, Zionists right now? They don't even, they're not even, I mean, like, you know, um, let, I mean, you could talk about people in Israel, but let's say Zionists live in the United States right at this second are co-signing and supporting, maybe not doing it themselves, but some of the, some people, you know, are ex-IDF members, right? Actually, uh, anyway, people like Shire are co-signing IDF going into Gaza and committing war crimes right now. And it's not like Davidson, you know, actually grew up under the the terrible circumstances that, no, that, that causes no, he has all it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you were saying, but. Um, uh, yeah, no, like, like, yeah, he's do, he's doing the same thing, and he has much less excuse. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with don't be foolish. <laughs>